Actually, we didn't even know we were pregnant until like 16 weeks, four months. And so many negative reports has just been coming concerning the pregnancy. But God beat them all. After I put to bed, um, I started having a gas trap. So uh, we were forced to call the emergency. And they came and they said, I need to go straight to the hospital. That they can't take me to the nearest one. I need to go to where I delivered my baby. We went there. But because of the pain I was going through then, they were just pumping a lot of things into my body. Then when it got to some certain stage, I helped the nurse in. And I said, what are you putting in my body? And then she explained, and I said, oh, I agreed. I allowed her to do that. And I was discharged. I went back home. Then all of a sudden, September 16, in the middle of the night, my tongue, I started feeling some hitches in my tongue. And I was like, this is not normal. So I went to the mirror to look at it. And I saw that one part of my tongue has been swollen. Then, I anointed it and I went back to bed. Within 20 minutes, the other part is swollen too. And I begin to reason that if this thing continues to swell through down my lungs, I might not be able to breathe. My husband was in our home. He was in Canada. I called him. I said, I need to go to the emergency now. He was on the phone with me. By the time we could say Jesus is Lord, the tongue has stretched out longer than an animal. On getting to the emergency, I just dropped the car in front of the emergency. My boss, I left a note that in case I passed away, they should call my husband number and then that I'm in the emergency center. I don't know how they packed my car, but I just left it there and I ran. On getting there, when they saw me, I was just hearing, everybody was just running out and scatter uh, and straight away to the theater room and about more than 50 doctors were there. People were just giving suggestions. While they were talking, my, my, the tongue got swollen and my breath was, I was gasping for hair. They tried to pull the camera, as tiny as the camera is, it couldn't go down my throat. So they were saying they need to cut it. That when they cut, I won't be able to talk again. And then I, I wrote them a note. I said, God gave me a vision by this time next year. And this is the program I'm doing. I won't be able to talk. And the doctor said, well, it's only when you are alive that you'll be able to do a program. That they're going to give me something that when I want to talk, I'll be pressing. So they asked me to sign. I agreed. I said, they should cut it. As they were just about to cut, one small um, student doctor just said, no, they should not cut it. That they should do it the other way. Yeah, and they should cut uh, pieces, whatever they want to put in my tummy, in a tiny way and gum it together and force it in. And which they did, and it worked. On doing whatever they were doing, I could see that my spirit was leaving my body. And then eventually, my spirit left my body. So I came out of my body. I was looking at my body on the, on the bed. So many doctors were around. 
So when I looked up, I was talking to the doctor. They were like, oh, we eventually lost her. So I touched the doctors. My hand went through their body. The monitor that was, that was monitoring my heart, everything went blank. And I was like telling them in Africa, when our TV is not working, we give it a serious beating and the TV will start working. So I was trying to be, um, tap the monitor to work. My hand would just go through the monitor. And I knew, oh my God, what's happening? They were trying to resuscitate me. On looking up at the entrance, I saw so many ghosts, so many people. When I was talking, they were like, oh, they can't hear you. So when I heard that they said they can't hear me, I looked at them like, oh, so you people can hear me. They said, we can hear you. Come over and join us. And I said, who are they? They said, they are spirit that are roaming about. And I said, no, I am not dead. There is no relationship between the dead and the living. And they started laughing that, oh, we said so as well. We too, we said so. Just join us and let's start going. And they were busy looking at each room. They were living like normal human beings. In fact, those spirits in that hospital, they were more than the living in the hospital. They were just roaming around. And I said, no, I am not going. As I was trying to talk to the doctor, these spirits were telling me, they can't hear you, you are gone. Join us and let's start continue life like that. I said, no, I am not joining you. I am not going. Eventually, a very handsome man came. When he came, he just held my hand. As he held my hand, then we started flying in a tunnel. But I was looking down as we were going through the tunnel, very dark tunnel. I was looking down the tunnel and I could see that the hearts begin to get smaller and smaller till they get to the size of an egg. And I'm like, am I leaving the planet that we passed the first heaven, the second heaven, we passed, I saw the moon, I saw the star, I saw most of the elemental forces. Eventually, we came out of the tunnel. When we when we came out of the tunnel, it was very dark, like a fog, but not white, dark, very thick darkness. And the, the man that, was, that took me, he beat his chest. Ha, 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 ha. I am the spirit of death. So when it say that, I just, this is the way we came out of the tunnel. We are, we are facing two gates. And when he beat his chest and said, ah, ha, ha, I am the spirit of death. So I turned. When I turned, I looked at his eyeball, eyeball to eyeball. I was able to see who, how exactly he looks. So I was looking at him like a ah, spirit of death. So I looked at him from head to the toe. By the time I would look, I saw that he has a tail. And immediately, the word in Revelation 12 verse 4, the dragon that, that took that child from Mary just appeared to me. The, the, the vision of that, the description of the dragon, just I said, ah, this is the dragon that was described in Revelation 12, verse 4. A, a man with a tail. So this is the end. This is the end. As I was just um, thinking, the man just went again and turned and entered the tunnel. And I was like, oh my God. He's going to go and take another person. He's going there to go and take another person. Then a man appeared to me in white. When he appeared to me in white, it was like on a judgment seat. And he said, welcome. I said, ah, thank you. At least you, you can hear me. Then he called me by my name. When he called me, he said that, um, do I know what I'm doing here? I said, I don't know. This dragon just came and took me from where I was. Then he looked at me. He read Psalm 24. As he read Psalm 24, where he says that um, the heart is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and those that live therein. For you have founded it upon the sea and established it upon the flood. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that had a clean hand and a pure heart, 
who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and the righteousness from God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. As soon as he gets to verse 7, he said, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up. When he did that, his wings just spread like a peacock, the way the peacock will demonstrate their wings. He, just, he spread it and the wings just, he grew like taller. And as he's saying that, there was so much noise with um, smoke coming out. Brrr, everywhere thundering. And the gates lifted up. When the gate lifted up, the light shined. And then when he said that um, the light shined in darkness, everywhere turned light. Where I was, there was light. So I could probably, I saw the angel that was talking to me. Then on looking, I wasn't really concerned about the person talking to me. I was just like, what kind of light is this? Then on looking, I saw one of our brethren, Mama Dawn. And I said, I know this woman. This is Grandma Dawn. She was praying, she was standing on a sunflower, a yellow sunflower. And then those sunflowers were singing. They were like moving this way. She was putting a blue long dress and they drew the same sunflower on her dress those sunflower too they were moving they were singing i couldn't hear what they were saying but i knew that they were singing and i could hear mama Don saying have mercy have mercy show her your grace and i i wanted to brush the angel away and say hey hey i know this woman she's my us she comes to our church like let me go at least i recognize one person let me go and he said ah, ah, wait to qualify to go in into that gate there are some things that they have to wait and he asked me that do i know what was written in um isaiah 54 17. i said yes i know no weapon fashion against me shall prosper and when I go to the to the to the part of every tongue that rises up against me, in, in, in I shall condemn in judgment. The angel said, "Good. Every tongue, including your own tongue, that condemned you, that rises up against you, you shall condemn." I said, "Okay, I agreed. That that scripture verse is meant for you to be the judge of yourself." Then he went further to say that um, Matthew 12, 36, that for every word that comes out of our mouth, do I know that we are going to give account of it? I said, I know. Then he went further to quote 1 Corinthians 6, 2. And he said, do we not know that we are going to be the judge of the heart? That who do I think we want to judge? I said, the evil one. He said, no, you are going to judge yourself you are going to be the judge and you will be the one that will declare the type of judgment that will be given unto you so before you go in there the last question they want to ask me that will qualify me to enter that gate he now asks me to read matthew 6. i want all of us to open that matthew 6. i'm sorry if i'm taking your time and after this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And then when, it, when I was about to, I was reading it like the King Agatin, I was reading it very, very fast. Then when I got about to go to the next verse, he asked me to calm down. And he said, verse, verse, um, 12 and forgive us our debt as we forgive those that sins against us so i was about to go to the next but he said no 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 that is the judgment you have pronounced your judgment that is the judgment i'm going to judge myself and then my, my i will decide 
I, um, you know, the, the word of God says, for, by thy word thou shalt be justified, and by thy word thy, thou, thou shalt be condemned. That it is by my mouth that will do this judgment. He asked me to read it again, and I, I said, ah, Matthew says, I will read it again. As I was going again to read, when I got to forgive us as we forgive those that sins against us, he said, that is the judgment. So he did, he just clapped his hand, and there was a scale that came. So they put the level of my forgiveness. Uh, this is the, 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 they put my sin in one place, and they now put the level that I forgive, they put it at the other way just to make it balance. But unfortunately, the sin rose far, far above the level of my forgiveness. And he said, Who shall come into this place? He that have a clean heart and a pure heart. By the time they, they scale the level of my forgiveness, it was 0.001%. So he said, Depart. I do not know you. Immediately he said that the gate shut down and everything became dark again. So I don't know where to turn to than to turn to the left side. So I turned to the left side. As I was walking, I saw a very big giant gate, a very big one. It was eating. You cannot, you cannot know that there, there is a gate there. But I saw the gate. And I saw so many people just walking in. In fact, they were walking in, chatting and talking. Ignorantly, they were walking in. And I was like, this looks like gates of hell. On looking, I saw a sister that I knew very well. And I said, ah, ah, ah. no, you, ah, no, no, excuse me, this one cannot be here. This is gate of hell, she cannot be here. As I was like, why did you put her here? She's supposed not to be here. This sister, I remember that, in church, this is what she has done for the church. The sister was with a big cabinet. This cabinet was full of all her good deeds, unrighteousness. So when I mentioned what she, she did for the church, she will, she will open the cabinet and bring out a file and show it to another angel that was there. This angel, his shape is like an S, like a snake. He looks like a snake and he's putting on a, a dark wrapper and all... Oh no. I, it's so scary like a movie. He was busy chewing um, chewing stick, and when he wants to spit, he's gonna spit on people. And then I was so I was talking to him like, "Why did you put this sister here? This is what she did on behalf of the church." The sister too will open the thing and give it to the to this demonic angel, and he's going to look at. He would say it and put it in the fire. People were screaming. I didn't actually see fire, but I knew that the place was so hot because the way people were screaming. This sister too was screaming even with all her righteousness and her good deeds. She was screaming, busy carrying this cabinet on her head. And I said, hey, hey, I remember in the church, you did this, you did it, you did it. This is how we open the file again and give to the angel like, at least look at all the good things I have done. The angel will look at it again. And it, I said like three things that I knew that this sister did on behalf of the church. And they were just tearing it and I said, ah, don't you know, all your righteousness before God are like a filthy rag. When you offend in one, you are guilty in all. You are not a murderer. You are, you are, you are not, you don't steal, you don't kill. But you gossip, you are a murderer. That's how we do it here. Yeah. And who are you, evil self, to be coming here to be questioning us? And I said, okay, what has this sister done? We knew her as a good person. And we have sung to her that she has gone to heaven. Why is she here? She's a good person, but she has too much anger. It is anger that brought her here. Then the sister broke in tears. And I was like, no, she cannot be here. 
And the angel looked at me and said, Ah, ah, ah. who have make you judge over us? Who are you? Who are you? Oh, don't you know this is going to be your own place too? And I said, What have I done? And he said, You don't forgive. You pretend that you forgive. You do not forgive. So all your righteousness before me, you will be like a filthy rag. All your righteousness before God will be like a filthy rag, and this is where you will end up to be. And I said, Whom did I not forgive? I begin to search my heart. What did I not forgive? And he mentioned a particular very close family to us. He mentioned their name. And it was done on me that yes, truly. Because the Sunday that this thing happened, the brother in quotes actually came, talked to me, apologized, and I said, it is okay. But immediately he dropped. I said, I, I, I know it is okay. I'm just going to give you a gap. That was Sunday afternoon. And this happened Sunday midnight. So the sin came to my remembrance like, truly I did not forgive because I have said I have heard. It's because I was closer to you. That's why you were able to do that. I will just give you a gap. I will be greeting you and that is it. And I when the angels, I said, okay, I agree. But this woman cannot be in hell. So I put my leg in the in, in the in the hell. One leg was there. I was about to go this way to pull that sister out. Then I begin to hear my husband's voice. He was singing, The resurrection power do miracle in my life. Today, today, do miracle in my life. The resurrection power do miracle in my life. Today, today, do miracle in my life. And I was, I just, my leg was there already. I just need to like go like that. And I said, that's my husband's voice. That's my husband's voice. So I turned back. As I turned back, I saw Mama Dawn again. This time she was on her knees. She started begging, give her one more chance. Grace and mercy. Let your grace and mercy just let her go back because of thy song. I don't even know who thy song was anyway. I don't know. There is, I can't even remember that I have, I have children. When she was mentioning thy song, I was in my head that who is thy song? Then our Lord Jesus Christ appeared. When he appeared, he appeared with the way he went to the cross. The blood on him was not dripping, but it was gushing out. The crown on his head was the thorns. He was half naked, full of blood. Then he started weeping. How long will you continue to nail me to the cross? How long? How long? Then Mama Don knelt down and started touching Jesus' feet and saying, please send her back. Send her back. Then, Jesus, out of the blood that was gushing out from his head, he started taking it and was wiping it from head. By the time it goes to the toes, the gate, the, whatever I was standing up, just slide open and I jump back into my body. And then they said, we got the pause, we got a pause, we got a pause. And I went into coma. Brethren. This is not a gimmick. I was actually pronounced dead. But the grace and mercy of God brought me back. They said, if you are guilty in one, just one, then you are guilty 